In this video, we will mostly be discussing how to calculate the probability of drawing a combination of cards from a deck. Um, but let's just take a quick minute and talk about what it means to be mutually exclusive. Um, if two events cannot happen at the same time, all right, if there are two conditions that cannot be satisfied at the same time, then those events are called mutually exclusive. Uh, for example, you cannot be both a freshman and a junior in high school at the same time. So uh, those events would be mutually exclusive. All right, um, you can be a freshman and a girl at the same time. So the events being a girl and being a freshman are overlapping. So now looking at problem number three, Roswell students were surveyed about whether they had a summer job and whether they attended a concert last summer. So those are the two events. All right, um, had a summer job and attended a concert. Is it possible to do both of those things um, during the same summer? Sure, all right. Some students um, attend had a summer job and attended a concert last summer. So since uh, both of those can happen to the same person, then these are overlapping events. They are not mutually exclusive. The probability that they had a summer job was 0 0.42, and the probability that they went to a concert was 0 0.65. The probability that they had a summer job and attended a concert was 0 0.30. If a Roswell student is randomly selected, find the probability that a student had a summer job or attended a concert. Okay, we'll let J represent um, had a summer job. Okay, so this will be set J. We'll let set C be attended a concert. So with that in mind, we are being asked to calculate the probability of J or C. Okay, so we have two choices. We can either draw a Venn diagram or we can do the following calculation. Um, we know a formula for this. The probability of J or C is the probability of J plus the probability of C minus the probability of J and C. All right, so this is how you would do it using the formula. So uh, they told us the probability of J is 0 0.42. Okay, the probability of C is 0 0.65. And the probability of J and C is 0 0.3. All right, so we just need to calculate this out. All right, 0 0.77, which equals 77%. Okay, uh, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, just real quick, let me squeeze in uh, the other way to do it. I mentioned you could make a Venn diagram out of this. Um, so let's take a look at what that would have looked like. So Venn diagram. It's going to squeeze it in right here. Okay. 
having a job, attending a concert. Okay, so um, the probability of having a job and attending a concert, that was your 0 0.30. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and make that 30%. Okay, now the probability of having a job was 42%. We already wrote down 30, so that just leaves 12% for this section over here. A total of 42. All right, the probability of attending a concert was 65%. Okay, we've already got the 30 right here, so that leaves 35% um, for this right here. I don't think we need this number, but if we needed to, I could figure out the number that goes outside of the two circles by subtracting from 100, okay, all three of these numbers. So minus 12, minus 30, and minus 35. That's 23. So 23% of the students neither had a su summer job nor attended a concert. I don't think we need that number. Anyway, so if I want to calculate the probability that a student uh, had a summer job or attended a concert, J or C, now that I have my Venn diagram, um, I know that J or C is just this part of the Venn diagram. Okay, so I can just add these three numbers up. So if I just go 12, plus 30, uh, plus 35, that is 77%. All right, I guess technically I should have said 12%, you know, plus 30%, plus 35%. All right, and that's 0.77, which is 77%, just like we got using the formula. All right, so that's two ways to do it. Now, let's move on to the cards. One card is drawn from the deck shown here. Find each of the probabilities. So we're talking probability, so you know we're going to be doing target over total. So what's the total? Well, uh, at a glance, you can see that there are 16 cards in this deck. All right, 16 cards. So keep in the back of your mind that the total for each of these problems will be 16, as long as, uh, unless it's a given problem, which gives us a new total. Okay, each problem gives us a little mini picture of the deck so I can zoom in. So now let's find the probability that a card has a letter and an even number on it. Okay, well, target over total. We know that the total is 16. So the target is uh, cards that have both a letter and an even number. So let's just highlight all those. All right, there's a letter and an odd number. There's a letter, letter odd. Letter even, letter even, letter even, letter, letter odd, letter odd, letter even, nothing, letter and even, and then just a number. All right, so there are three numbers, uh, three cards that have a letter and an even number. So that's why the probability will be 3 out of 16 for that one. Okay, moving on to part B. All right, it's not a given problem, so I know that the total uh, will be 16. So what's the probability of pulling a card that has a letter or an even number on it? Okay, so when they say or, or is more. So um, I'm going to highlight cards that have a letter. 
I will also highlight cards that have an even number. All right, when we're doing or, we just highlight all that mess. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be both. It's just either one, or is more. So I'm going to highlight anything that has a letter. Letter, 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 letter. Okay, or an even number. So, or is more. So in addition to all the ones I just highlighted, I will also highlight even numbers. Okay, two, four, four. Okay, everything got highlighted except for the blank card. So that means there must be 15 that I just highlighted. So the probability will be 15 out of 16. Aha, a given problem. All right, let's start with that. Whenever I have a given problem, uh, the given part is the new total. All right, new total. Okay, and this part over here is going to be the target. So let's start with the new total. Card has a C on it. Okay, so there's a C on it. C on it. C on it. So guess guess what, guys? That's the new total. Um, so what I need to do is uh, I need to cross out anything else. So these are gone. Okay, these are gone, and this is gone. Okay, so I have my new total is three. Boom. Now the target is cards that have a number on it. Okay, so what cards are those? Well, this has a number on it and this has a number on it. So that's going to be 2 out of the 3. So that is how you do probability when, when there's a, a given. Okay, for the next couple of problems, we're drawing two cards. So when you're drawing two cards, you have to watch out for um, whether or not it's an AND problem. All right, you're drawing uh, the first card and the second card. Um, when it's an and problem, you're going to wind up multiplying. And when it's an or problem, you're going to wind up adding. Okay, there's a little bit more to it than that, but keep that in mind. And you multiply or you add. Okay, now. Two cards are being drawn from this deck with replacement. All right, with replacement. That means we're going to draw the first card, but then we're going to put it back before we draw the second card. Okay, find the probability of getting a C both times. A card with a C both times. Okay, so you'll notice we didn't see the word um, and we did not see the word or. So when it says both times, that's really going to be an and problem. All right, because both times, that means we got to see the first time and the second time. Okay, both times. So anyway, the point of that is we're going to have to multiply. So we're going to have to find, so the probability of getting a C the first time and we're gonna have to multiply that times the probability of getting a C the second time alright these probabilities should not change because we are doing this with replacement alright we're we're putting the deck back to the way it was each time that's what with replacement means anyway 
So what's the probability of pulling a card with a C on it? So remember there are 16 cards in this deck, so target over total. The total will be 16. Um, now the target, these cards with C's on them. So I see one right there, one right there, and one right there. So that's going to be 3 out of 16 times 3 out of 16. All right, multiply these together, and that's going to be your probability. Uh, you multiply straight across. So 3 times 3 is 9. And uh, I'm forgetting what 16 times 16 is. 256. Alright, so that's the probability of both of these things happening in a row. Okay, so the next one is the same question, uh, but this time without replacement. So that means that um, we're going to pull the first C and we're not going to put it back. Alright, this is without replacement. So uh, when we take this first C I'm going to scribble it out um, to show that that card is gone. So, other than that, this is the same thing. So we're still uh, doing both times. So this is still, uh, even though they didn't say the word and, this is still an and problem. So we need to, to still find the probability of, of pulling a C that first time. And we're going to multiply that by the probability of pulling a C the second time. All right. But because we are not putting the first card back, the second probability will change. The first probability will not change. It's the exact same situation. We have 16 cards to start with. And of those 16 cards, three of them have a C on it. Okay, so target over total, that is 3 out of 16. Now, for the second probability, um, we have to stop and think. We pulled one of these cards, right? According to this story, um, we've pulled a C first. So let's say we pulled this one. So this card is now gone. So when we go to calculate the, the probability of pulling another C, two things have changed, the numerator and the denominator. All right, the target. How many cards have C's on them? Well, this card, we took it away and we didn't put it back. So instead of three cards with C's, now there are only two. So the numerator changed. But also the denominator. Because we didn't put that first card back, um, now we only have 15 cards total. All right, so these will be the probabilities. So um, multiplying straight across, this is going to give us 6 out of whatever 16 times 15 is. 240. All right, and you could reduce that and turn it into a decimal or a percent if you want. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.